Welcome to section two of the Lieutenant. Here is the plot map. Feel free to pause the video to have a look at the plot map or refer back to it whenever you need to. Let's look at the arrival of the first fleet at Sydney Cove. The initial event of significance is Rook winding the timekeeper. In the world of the Royal Navy, rank was everything. Due to Rook's ability to navigate on board the ship Sirius, he is involved in timekeeping. He sees this as a prestigious act and something that sets him apart from the other men. It also highlights the hope that this journey will aid Rook in his self-discovery and pursuit of a place in the world. When we look at the landing, event two, Surgeon Waymark shows the firepower of the British. This is a significant event. Now, Surgeon Waymark acts of his own accord and he engages with the natives in a hostile way. This is where he fires his weapon at the shield of a native man to try to communicate with them when their other attempts had not worked. Now this sets the tone that despite the king's wishes for amicable relations to be made with the natives, this may not be possible due to the attitude of the British soldiers. Settling at Sydney Cove. Governor Gilbert establishes the law of the land. Now this scene de depicts a contrast between the wishes of the governor and the reality of the new settlement. Although Governor Gilbert states that relationships with the natives are of vital importance and that they are to be established with kindness, we know that this is not the case for many of the soldiers. And Rook is probably the only one that's excluded from this. Rook aspires to be more than a prison guard. Now, Rook reflects on this concept in, a quite, in quite a bit of detail. Now, Rook's ulterior motive is discussed here. He sees his role as an astronomer a vital role to the new colony. Yet, the colony has more pressing issues that he ignores, such as lack of food, having to establish shelter, the fact that the natives may be hostile especially now that Surgeon Waymark has fired at them, and even possible rebellion by the ships of convicts that they've brought in. This highlights Rook's narrow-mindedness and feelings of superiority, that he thinks that his role is actually essential when it's not. The Observatory. This part is inspired by the fact that Rook has his own interaction with the natives. Now, Rook approaches the natives who are fishing. His approach is very jovial and formal. He attempts to communicate in English, despite the unlikeliness that this would be an effective manner of interacting. However, probably a better approach than Surgeon Waymark, again, who shot at them. Rook sees this as an opportunity to further his education and the goals of Governor Gilbert and the King. Now, this leads Rook to push for an observatory. Rook does not consider that it will take some time to build an observatory. Yet, he still approaches Governor Gilbert to have men and resources assigned to this task. Rook does not see this as an issue. Now, this only links to his pursuits as an astronomer. Remember that this is a new settlement with no shelter even for the convicts. Gilbert, however, can see the bigger picture. He sees these issues for the settlement and initially refutes Rook's selfish scientific request. However, Rook does use some language to convince Governor Gilbert to build him this observatory. 
That leads us to the point where Rook is allowed to build the observatory. Now, Rook observe, Rook's observatory acts as a form of escape. It is quite isolated out on the headland. He enjoys the process of building the observatory and the hard labour involved. But this is possibly only due to the fact that it serves his own self-interest. Let's have a look at Rook's observations around the campsite. Now, Rook reflects that the settlement is likely to fail. The major issue facing the new settlement is sustaining the food supply for the colony. Rook has a very pessimistic and critical view. He is quite a realist and he sees that starvation might spell the end of the colony. However, Rook merely watches as other soldiers and officials grapple with this major crisis. Well, what happens next? Rook and Silk agree to go on an expedition. The entitled British aim to further colonise the land. However, they still have to find fertile land to begin harvesting food for the colony to make sure that they can survive. Rook volunteers to go on an expedition, which is to look for this fertile land and potentially maybe see some of the natives as well. Now, Rook only signs up because he believes he can get something out of this, some form of education or some new insights. Similarly with Silk. Silk also signs up with the hopes of finding material for his novel. The Rose Hill Expedition is very successful. So fertile soil is found at Rose Hill. Rook was particularly helpful as a navigator. He too re realises his accomplishments and begins to feel a sense of purpose and belonging in Australia. However, this can also be seen from an Indigenous perspective as a further violation of their land. During this expedition, a significant event occurs where Brugden shoots at the natives. Now, Brugden is a convict. However, he's been used as a gameskeeper and was allowed to go on the expedition. This event highlights the continuance of negative relationships between the British and the natives. It also highlights the threatened emotions of the natives who fight the firepower of the British using only stones that they throw at Brug Brugden. Brugden shows a very careless side and further compounds the unlikely building of relationships by firing at these natives. As a result, Lieutenant Gardner is sent by the governor to capture two of the natives. Now, the kidnapping of the natives highlights Gardner's independent thoughts. He was very remorseful about his role in kidnapping these two men and only completed the task out of duty. He humanises the natives in a way that other men have not. And Rook has realised that Gardner, in coming to him and describing these events, that everything that Gardner has said about the kidnapping and his remorse and his regrets must remain private between Gardner and Rook as the fact that these views are against the British party will result in Gardner being punished. As such, Rook keeps this a secret. Let's look at the natives. Now, in the end of this section, there is a scene between Rook and Silk. Now, Rook does not tell Silk about Gardner's regrets and everything that Gardner has said about the kidnapping. Now, this highlights a shift in Rook and Silk's relationship. Rook chooses to remain loyal to Gardner, who has more similar views with Rook. Now, he lies to Silk to protect this new relationship 
and to protect Gardner. His distrust for Silk stems from Silk's desires to write this novel, outlining the new colony, and he knows that any material he provides to Silk would likely be engaging and used in the novel. In addition, Silk is also a social climber, the fact that he may use Gardner in order to advance his own position. As such, Rook keeps the secret. The natives escape. So the captured natives escape. Rook shows compassion for these natives, yet he must hide this from the other lieutenants due to the expectation. Silk's research highlights that the major objective of the colony is growth and dominance over the natives. Silk had been allowed to study the natives while they were captured. However, his learning is about selfish reason rather than genuine relationship building. Again, it's just material for his novel. All the while, Rook has been looking for this comet. Now, the comet never arrives. Remembering, Rook is here to be an astronomer. Now, the comet demonstrates Rook's main objective. He has anxiety and feelings of failure as his sole purpose for coming on the journey has not been fulfilled. Now, if he can't be an astronomer in the new world, if the comet never comes, which it hasn't, it brings to light the question, what is left for Rook in the colony if astronomy has failed him? And that leads us to the end of section two, looking at what will happen next in terms of native relationships. What will happen next in terms of where Rook will find his purpose? And what will happen next in the relationships between Rook and Silk and Rook and Gardner?